yeah, it's not doing too well. I'm going to call the family, let them know. Could you call all our friends and let them know? Yeah, thanks. Maybe this charger will pull through, but I don't know. Hello and welcome to another episode of AA3K on the go. I'm Mark, AA3K. Back in my video about batteries, I talked about my LifePo batteries and I picked up when I got the LifePo batteries, this Morange, Morange, uh, Lithium, LifePo and lead acid two amp hour charger. And I have been using this for about two years now since I really started Parks on the Air with uh, use and using LifePo batteries. And I've liked this little charger. It's compact to travel with if I'm going camping or something like that. Um, it's not particularly fast at two amps, but it got the job done and it would tell me when it lit the light as green that the charge was done. Never had any complaints about it. I started noticing the past couple of times I used this charger that it just didn't seem right that it seemed to be taking potentially longer than normal to charge the battery. Um, it just, again, just didn't seem right. Fast forward to this past New Year's, I actually went on a camping trip with friends, a very old tradition. Um, I brought my ICOM 7300 as I was going to Elk Neck State Park in Maryland, as well as uh, Elk Neck State Forest uh, is quite near there. So not only did I operate uh, from the campground in the evenings from my camper, I also grabbed the radio and my 16 amp hour battery and went up to the state forest to activate. Uh, and the next evening, I should say the next afternoon, I uh, took a long walk around the campground loops that were closed, found the beautiful location right next to the Chesapeake picnic table, campsite, nobody around, and I brought my FT817 down there to operate using my smaller 8 amp hour LifePo battery. Um, after the state forest activation, I did not try to recharge my 16 amp hour battery, but when I got back to the camper after the uh, activation in the uh, closed camping loop, I did hook up the 8 amp hour battery to this, and I, ex I expected it to be charged in about two hours. I probably used somewhere between a third and a half of that eight amp hour battery. Um, and after three, four hours, this was still not indicating that the battery was charged. I let it continue overnight and the next morning. And that battery should have been fully charged in about four hours from being empty. Still, this was not saying it was charged. I took uh, this off the battery, measured the battery's voltage. It was as expected, normal voltage. So it was basically indicating it was charged as best as I could tell. Is the BMS within that little battery going? I don't know. I then put the charger, I should say, I then put this charger on my 16 amp hour battery, which I had really pulled down. Uh, it was at least half empty. And again, a uh, very, very long charge period. I would have expected it to be recharged in four to five hours. After like eight to 10 hours, still nothing. So I took this off and said, maybe it's time for a new battery charger. Uh, when I got home, I did some research. I watched some other ham tubers on YouTube and, and I found one or two that really liked this charger, uh, included links to it, HTRC Smart Charger. Uh, and other than the input power cord getting loose, and that was just simply bad soldering and a very quick correction, they, uh, uh, they all had good praise for this. So I decided to buy one. Whereas this charger barely cost me $20 two, three years ago. This one was 45 or so dollars. We'll put a link in the description. No affiliation, uh, no Amazon affiliate link. I paid Amazon's normal price for this. I do not get a discount. This is not a... Uh, paid or or a ask for endorsement or review of the product this particular charger though will do up to 20 amps um, and it is switch selectable for 5 uh, 10 or 20 amps uh, this will do 12 or 24 volts 
It is capable of charging lead acid and absorbed glass mat AGM, lithium, and LifePo. You can select the specific battery chemistry on this. The instructions do recommend that for under 20 amp hour batteries that you only use the five amp setting. So I picked this up, gave it a shot, and I have to say, I am quite pleased with this. It is unfortunately more bulky to carry as compared to this. However, the output connection to the battery and the input connection does con disconnect. It does have a fan to cool it at 20 amps. I guess this can get quite hot. Uh, and this will all auto detect the voltage of the system. So if your BMS is deactivated in your life pull battery because you've really pulled down the, uh, the voltage in it, you may need to connect an external 12 volt source just to get this woken up enough to start charging it and get a little charge into the life pull battery and wake up the battery management system within it. I'll try to give you a quick rundown of the display on this. Unfortunately, all of my LifePo batteries are currently pretty much charged. But what I do like, it does tell you the amount of charge in the battery at the time. Uh, the current temperature of this, not of the battery itself, but if you're bat charging in a particularly cold or hot environment, uh, this will let you know what, that, what the temperature of this is, and therefore potentially or pretty close to the temperature of the battery. Uh, it will tell you how much current it is pushing into the battery and the current voltage. And as I said, it also indicates the state of charge of the battery. Uh, one other nice thing, it does show the temperature in both Fahrenheit and Celsius. So for wherever you are in the world, whatever your preferred temperature readout is, this has got you covered with no adjustments. So let me get this on the table for you and uh, can hopefully show you its uh, operating mode and such. And you can then take it from there. Here is the HRTC smart charger and you can set your charge rate through this switch here. Uh, then before you connect to the batteries, you would select whether it's connecting to a lithium battery, AGM lead acid or a LifePo battery. For lead acid batteries, it also has a repair mode where it will pulse voltage to the battery for about 24 hours maximum unless it has detected that the battery has recovered to help desulfate the battery. Uh, I have another charger that does the same. It does seem to help a older battery and such. I was running this on my larger uh, camper battery and it was probably going to go the full 24 hours if not longer. Uh, unfortunately the power to the house cut out for about three or four minutes so whatever timer this had in it uh, was reset and it was just kept on going. I ended up shutting that, all, that off after about 20 hours. I have not really tested the battery. The voltage is about 13.5 volts or so on that particular battery. I do not use that battery for POTA anymore as it weighs like 60 pounds. It is way too much to carry around. Uh, power input is uh, the standard two pin plug and they give you a nice long cord because they really do mean this to be used like in your garage or something like that to uh, charge a car battery. Uh, plug it in. It takes a moment or two to wake up. There we go. Display check and right now it says off. It's not charging. It is in the LifePo mode and you can say go to repair mode, do a lithium battery, AGM lead acid or back to LifePo. <clears throat> the connectors for a battery plugged into this XT60 connector on this side. And they give you a really good beefy clips. Predominantly meant for clipping onto uh, the big posts of an automotive battery. And when I ordered this, I did order another one of these cables ending in the XT60, uh, but coming out to ring terminals with the intent of cutting off those ring terminals and either scavenging the clips from the original charger, um, or I think I have a set of these in my junk box and putting those on to get a better grip on the little tabs that are on my 
LifePo batteries. Uh, however, it turns out that these particular clips do get a good good grip on those little tabs, so I'm probably just going to leave them as is. I had borrowed a friend's Noco Genius charger, which has like a half moon cut out in this area, so you can go straight onto a post such as that from a lead acid battery, and they get very poor grips on those little tabs. So let's see about getting this hooked up to this battery as a, and I can sh hopefully show you the, the display really quick. As I said, this battery is pretty much charged. I was running some experiments with my FT817, but not very long. So let's get the, I'll start by just putting the minus on. And I found that putting it on this way is pretty good. And that way, and now, says 13.5 volts, 1.2 amps. Whoops, I got that into frame. Saying charging from 50% up, 14.6 volts, 4.9 amps. And now it is determined the battery is full. So it's topped it up. But I do like the display, it gives me a lot of information. Uh, the fan has kicked on into higher rates that you can hear it uh, when it's not uh, running or I should say when it's not charging, the fan is off. And if the unit has not gotten too warm, the fan is barely audible. Uh, it does seem to run though any time that it is charging. But wait, there's more, as they like to say on, as seen on TV. While I was planning this video, I checked a website for a company called Battery Hookup. The website is batteryhookup.com. And they're a company that sells new and pulled but still serviceable batteries uh, to the market. And they don't always have them, but they did have a significant stock of these batteries. Several different brands, but all the same thing. 32 amp hours, 12.8 volts uh, with uh, bolt down terminals on the top. And at $50, I could not say no, so I grabbed one. It only weighs 10 pounds. I, I love LifePo batteries. 10 pounds, 32 amp hours, you can't beat that. So this was a perfect opportunity to really test the charger. Uh, I set the charger for 20 amps, though I only recently noted on Battery Hookup's website that they say charge at a maximum of 15 amps. But I connected the charger to the battery, fired it up, and uh, away it went. Uh, the fan did run at high speed. Uh, I, could, I almost likened it to being a jet engine. You will hear it in the video when I show you uh, the operation of it. One thing I did not mention before, and I really did not notice before, is that the charger will show the total amp hours pumped into the battery, which I think is a really handy feature so you can get an idea. How much did you drain the battery when you used it? How much is the battery actually taking at the current time? The only downside is, is while it will give you a continuous reading when it hits full, you don't see a summary of what the final amp hour was. It may be available from the information in the charger uh, following completion of a charge cycle, but the instruction manual does not mention any details about that. Next time I charge one of my batteries up, I'm going, and if completes, I'm going to have to play with the battery selection button and just see if there's a way to get back a summary of what it did in charging the battery, particularly the amount of amp hours. Uh, charging this battery up from when I received it took about two, two and a half hours, and it did put in about 15, 17 amp hours, maybe a few more. I did not get a reading you know, just before the charger completed its job. Uh, sitting in it, sitting there watching a charger going, is kind of like watching paint dry. Not the most exciting thing in the world. Take a quick look at what the charger sounds like when it's running at full fan speed and the displays as it's going along for charging this particular battery. So, as I said in my introduction, I'm happy with this uh, charger. 
I like the extra information it gives me. Uh, I like that it's 2.5 times faster than the two amp charger. The only downside I see to this new charger is its physical size of just the charger itself without its input power cable and charger clips is the same size as the entire two amp charger with the cables that go to the battery. Otherwise, uh, the time it will save on charging uh, is, is immensely important. I can be done before I go to bed, say. Uh, and I'm just gonna be keeping an eye on the power input plug to see if it gets loose or and the power output plug. Pulling these feet off the bottom reveals four screws and you can get the case open very quickly. Again, I'll be leaving a link in the description. So uh, it was it is not an Amazon affiliate link or anything. I get no commission on the purchase of it. If you're interested, you can look follow that link. And this is available through several different retailers on Amazon. Hey, why don't you check out some of the other videos on my channel and what's showing here in the end credits. This is Mark AA3K. Thank you and have a great day. Catch you next time.